Um, <laughs> welcome to the School Story <laughs> Podcast. Um, this week's episode is going to be a little bit lighthearted, uh, maybe a little bit serious, maybe a little bit fun, maybe a little bit embarrassing. Actually, it'll be a lot. It of will be, yeah, for a sure. A lot embarrassing. Uh, so we we are talking about um, some embarrassing stories that have happened at school. Uh, we've got some people that have sent stuff in. We've got some from other places. Um, but the first one that we want to share is from, maybe we should introduce ourselves. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Spencer from School Story. And I'm Stuart. Thank you for joining us today. We are excited. We felt like the March slump. We needed to get a little bit of humor in school. And so we wanted to talk about something funny. But first, Spencer, you just got back from Google. Tell me about it. Oh gosh! Uh, <laughs> why did you have to go that one? Um, we did. We got back from Google. Um, interestingly enough, we had to sign an NDA. Oh. Um, so we Jordan School District is a Google district, and uh, we currently have a fifty, probably sixty thousand people that are on that account. So it's a larger account, probably the third biggest in the state of Utah, behind Alpine and. Um, Actually, we're probably the second biggest Google account because Davis is a Microsoft district. But anyway, uh, they were looking to show us some of the new things that were coming up with um, Gemini and some of the other AI tools and some of the advanced features that you get with Education Plus. Um, and that's throughout all of the workspace. That's throughout all of safety uh, on the back end of Google. Um and if you're familiar with Google and their safety, Gmail and all that stuff, they, they never get hacked, right? You never get hacked. It's usually user error uh, when somebody gets hacked. It's it's not Gmail itself. Anyway, so we got a tour of campus in San Jose. That was really cool. Got to ride the bikes, um, get some pictures. Nice. And, um, it was uh, it was it was it was pretty remarkable actually because I'm a Google nerd and an Android nerd, and so for me to go it was a big deal. And so yeah. it's like your Taj Mahal. It was a pretty big deal. Like I, <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on. And for those of you, that, I mean, a lot of you don't know me to listen to this, but there was some family stuff going on that I could not miss. And I had just gotten back from another trip. And so I literally, we went, we got back the night before, flew out. I spent the whole day and then I had to fly red eye back to get back for a family thing. But the rest of the group stayed. You made it back. It Saturday. Yeah. Everything's good. Made it back. Uh, That's all that matters. Cool. So. At some point, uh, when all of the things that we cannot talk about are released, then I will talk about how cool it was to uh, um, to see those first. But uh, elementary story here to get us started off. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like something one of my kids would do. We have a student, first grader, uh, who poops his pants on purpose so he does not have to stay at school. So when he wants to go home, he poops his pants. And that's about once a week. Uh, so those of you that have kids that are first graders, you're looking at maybe six, seven, eight years old, depending on where you start your kids in school. Um, that's a smart kid getting out of school, pooping his pants. It's not going to work when he's in college or anything like that, right? Well, maybe it will, but um, so <laughs> the craziest part was the replies. This is not the only kid that has done this. No, definitely um, not. Definitely most kids not. have learned that that's their free ticket home is pooping your pants. Yeah. We had a, uh, high school chemistry, a kid stole a huge chunk of sodium from the chemistry storage room. Okay. And um, obviously shouldn't have access to the, the chemistry st storage room. He thought it would be funny to throw it into the toilet. And if you've never seen it, I, I recommend Googling sodium in water and what it does. Uh, so he threw it in and then... <laughs> he ended up having to go to the emergency room to get the porcelain shards picked out of him. So he definitely learned about chemical reactions oh my uh, the God. hard way that day. Uh, was he okay? Yeah, he was fine. Um, luckily, it was just kind of shards throughout his his leg and stuff. But he threw about three quarters of a pound in the toilet. Um, and it it's like throwing a bomb in, in the toilet. And it went everywhere. He became known for that. Needless to say, for the rest of his for the rest of his life, do you run into him at reunions or anything like that? Uh, no, because he was a little bit older than me. Okay, so unfortunately, okay. I have not. Um, there, it's funny because I think I mean not to not to delve into the topic of bathrooms and defecation and stuff like that, <laughs> but 
the defecation. There are I, my kids, my boys have some unwritten rules where they will at this point now they will not go number two at the school. Just too many things have happened where kids are throwing stuff over wet, you know, wet towels, shaking the whole thing. Other stuff is going on where kids might be passing vapes and, you know, one of my kids is in the stall. Um, so they just they just don't go to the bathroom uh, number two at school anymore. And I'm like, well, how do you control that? And well, I come home for lunch or this is my high school boys. Right. Um, anyway, it's just uh, I'm curious if that's an actual thing that people follow. Um, I, I know people that that do that. Um, I don't know how they can wait sometimes. You're talking about adult people like grownups. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. That don't go to the bathroom at work. They are all about the uh, home court advantage, as they like to say. Home court advantage. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like if you're a faculty member, and we're, we're going off a little bit on this, is you have a nicer, potentially cleaner bathroom that is free from interruptions. Uh, yeah, but it's also shared with uh, potentially hundreds of adults, right? Especially if you're at a large high school. Um Typically, there's not going to be that many people using it, but you just never know. And for some people, it's just it's just too much. Um, so, OK, OK. Um, so I'll share another one. Uh, this is uh, obviously a high school student, um, maybe even a college student based on how old you have to be to donate blood. But anyway, a student fainted in class after donating blood having refused the offer of cookies or cracks and juice post-donation. Who, who to, turns down the free cookies? Dude. Even if it's goldfish, right? But this led to a dramatic scene with the teacher calling for the nurse while the whole class watched. And obviously, panning, pandemonium ensued after that. The, the student was fine. Um, I think that's more of one of those karma things, right? When you don't listen to people that are like yeah. professionals and they give you advice and it automatically comes back to to kind of bite you uh, at my school we offer we don't offer we have some programs where they are learning how to take blood get blood do shots right and so what is that what's the official like phlebotomy phlebotomy it, we don't teach phlebotomy in and of itself um we teach it's for medical anatomy or medical assistant because they'll do that and when i first got the job i told them no i'll never get poked but you know, you, you get poked and uh, I got poked about a month ago. No big deal. That kid nailed it. Got it in perfectly. There was no like pain. Drew two vials of blood without any issue. Done. And I was like, oh, great. That, that was easy. And so then last week um, they needed somebody. They didn't have one. The poor age, she gets poked like 10 times. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I can get poked again. I went down and, oh, goodness. They, have you ever had like a spicy poke where when it pokes, like it, it's, it's like spice is the best thing. I, it just shocks. It's painful. Oh, I'm talking about like spice the drug. Um, no, well, you know, just, I I've had that, that like. some where they've missed before and it hurts mm -hmm. like but bonkers and then it swells up because you, you get the infection because they didn't get it in the vein. I've, I've had that a couple of times. So they got it in the vein, but for some reason there was a double poke and both pokes really hurt. And I couldn't watch it because I don't like needles, but they did it. Great. Um, I will tell you, I was definitely lightheaded after that one. It was luckily I had some Oreos in my pocket, don't ask, and mm -hmm. ate some Oreos and drank uh, some sugar because I I was going to pass out. That one, that one hurt. That was not a good poke. At all. I did. I could see there's there's a bunch of actually stories connected with giving uh, giving blood and stuff like yeah, that. Now, okay, I got one. This is this is probably my <laughs> this is probably my favorite one. Okay. Uh, keep in mind this was 30 years ago. Okay. Fourth grade, we we're learning about Native Americans and had a homework assignment to come up with Native American sounding names for ourselves. Which, by the way, that's a really awesome homework because it's just so short. It's just come up with a name, like not like fourth grade homework assignments nowadays. They chose spotted one because they had a lot of freckles back then, 30 years ago. The next day when we were revealing our new Native American names, I just so happened to be sitting next to the biggest crush of my life at the time. And being a stupid 10-year-old, thought that farting by her would make her laugh and like me. 
I kept ripping it inside the giant TP with all my classmates stuck inside it, the teacher growing more upset. When it was finally my turn to reveal my name and explain why I chose it, the crush of mine said, it better be, oh, stinky one. And everyone started laughing at me. Panicked, I had to think of something quick. I said, oh, yeah? You thought those were bad? Wait until you smell this one. I tried as hard as I could to rip the loudest, smelliest fart of all, all time, only to completely poop my pants in front of everyone. Now, Hung Bros were very popular at the time. This was 94. And they did right. me no favor here. Uh, diarrhea was all over the floor. Kids were screaming and running out of the teepee as quick as possible. And it, ed- <laughs> and it ended up collapsing on me alone in my poop teepee. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is that is. No, it gets better. The teacher made everyone go outside to calm down and called my mom to come get me. I was so embarrassed and begged my mom to never make me go back to school. It took them forever to coerce me out of to leave the poop tent and wrap me in towels and carried me out to the car. I was carried by all my classmates who were all screaming at me and laughing. I remember closing my eyes and basically faking like I was dead, hoping it would go all the way. They weren't buying it. Almost 30 years later, it still gets brought up to me at least once per year. Kids are mean. <laughs> wow. That is, kids are mean. I, I think, though, that there's times when things are so funny, you just can't forget what you saw. Or I don't know if we're going to be able to top that one. No. We probably won't. But, um, yeah, I, I've had some embarrassing moments. Um, not They're not with poo. I, when I was in seventh <laughs> grade, I mean, there, there are some with that, but I won't share those. Um, when I was in seventh grade, uh, there, there was a girl that I liked. We were boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, her name was Michelle. And um, it, it must have been a Friday or Saturday night, a Saturday morning. I can't remember. Anyway, um, I, she really wanted to kiss, and I was not quite there yet, right? Um, but we were hanging out with a group of friends. So when I say group of friends, it was like 10, 12 people. And they were all like egging us on, egging us on, whatever. Anyway, and, you know, so I started getting super frustrated because I'm like, you guys, I'll do it when I want to do it. Anyway, so we were, we ended up playing hide and go seek because in the middle of the daytime, it's 12, 13 year olds are stupid, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can't anyway, control. so we both hid underneath a blanket. And this is where I was going to kind of bust my my move, right? And right at the moment when I was about to kiss her, one of the other kids pulled off the blanket and everybody was just standing there watching <laughs> and it did not end up happening. It was uh, super embarrassing, but um, not the most embarrassing moment of my life. But um, here's one from AJ Macbeth, uh, seventh grade. Again, it's beautiful uh, for a lot of schools, start of middle school. Students were asked to read a passage of a book aloud. I came to a word that I didn't know. So I just pronounced it like it looked fatty goo, fatty goo, F-A-T-T-Y-G-O-O, fatty goo. I didn't understand why the whole class, including the teacher, instantly burst up in a rip roaring laughter. The word was fatigue. (laughs) (laughs) I'm 54 and I still remember every second of that event. So looking at that word, you're like, even when I said fatty goo, you're like, fatty goo? How did you get? And then when I say fatigue, you're like, okay, I could see fatty goo. <laughs> so <laughs> one of my most embarrassing moments is exactly this. It was junior year in high school, had a mad crush on this girl. And we drove to a choir tour in a tour bus to California and we got to hang out with her, talk with her, and it was it was the highlight. It was amazing, and we got to Santa Monica Pier, and we're walking down the pier, and I don't remember a lot, but I do very vividly remember the situation. You know those words that you have read so many times, but you've never pronounced it out loud or seen it spelled, but you know what the word is. Anyways, uh, yes, yeah. Um, me, my buddies, and my crush, and of course my buddy said to be there because I did not live this down for a very long time. Correct. Uh, there was a ride that looked really, really fun, and I was like, guys, let's go ride Chahos. <laughs> and they all turned to look at me, and they're like, what? I'm like, Chahos. Let's go ride Chahos. 
uh, my date was rather smart or my crush was rather, rather smart. And um, she had this look of like utter disappointment on her face. Like, how stupid can you be? Do you know what Chahos is? I do because I know what you're talking about. Chaos. No. <laughs> Why does chaos have a CH? Um, no. I, there's a lot of different yeah. things in the English language as an English teacher that I would explain to my kids. They're like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I know none of it makes sense. None of it makes any sense. Chahos. Yeah. Wow. So stupid. I, to this day, I can still remember where we were. I'll never live that one down. Um, <laughs> I got one about sagging pants. Go ahead. So happened during school, uh, the student uh, was running from the school building, probably to his car or something in the parking lot. It, it wasn't when school had gotten out, so there weren't a lot of people around. Um, but he he runs <laughs> while he's running because he's sagging his pants. Uh, the pants fall to his knees, trips him. Somehow it was actually pretty impressive what he managed to do. He did like a, a half somersault, but it launched the pants almost completely off of him because the momentum pulled him down from his knees down to his ankles. He does a half somersault, manages to pull them up and keep jogging. And he didn't see me because I was out in the parking lot hanging out and no one saw it. And it was actually really smooth, though he did have some really bright colored boxer briefs on really bright colored they're they're those jeans are making a comeback the jinko jeans with the wide oh, leg baby. bottoms and oh, the, the saggy pants and it's like oh my gosh so that, that's like what early 2000s uh yeah. and and i was old then and now i'm old now to watch it come back the second time i think one thing we'll probably stay away from but as you can imagine as a listener there are probably hundreds of stories we've got three or four that are uh women starting their menstrual cycle in yeah. elementary middle stuff like that it can be embarrassing um, some of them i just i would feel horrible right and i i we've i mean i have a uh, daughter in fifth grade we've we've had the conversation with her about you know what happens and what do you do and who do you talk to and stuff like that but just just knowing that as a woman is coming at some point um I'm sure there's a bunch more that are not here uh, that that could be that could be shared. Um, anyway, I love I love this one. Um, this just is, this encompasses everything about school, everything from the day I started school to the very last day. It was all one and big embarrassment, and I cringe whenever I think about any moment even remotely related to school. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like middle school in a nutshell right yeah. and the craziest part is right is in you know you've got a middle schooler is like they're so stressed out about what other people will think other people think of them but yet everybody's in that same mind frame where they're everybody's thinking about what everybody else is thinking about them and so nobody has time to actually think about other people because they're so worried about what other and every once in a while you get this really kind of cool kid or cool girl that just kind of seems to have it figured out because they don't give a crap about what anybody else thinks yeah. and they just they they're just who they are um and those those kids i have so much respect for because they're just like yeah i don't care yeah you know whether they really do or not they act like they don't so yeah. um it's pretty funny that was funny okay this one's uh, about quarters okay the game, like the, the betting game where you throw them up against the no, wall? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, about $20 in quarters. So my aunt worked for J. Crew corporate offices, and now and then she would get clothes from sample sales, etc. She gave me this tan leather racing style bike jacket. It was in eighth grade. Have you noticed a pattern? There's a lot of middle school. It, yeah. It, it is an awkward year. Anyways, I was in eighth grade and a bit of a dork. There was this girl. Let's call her Stephanie. I was madly in love with this girl. She consumed my every thought. After asking around sixth grade and getting rejected, poor dumb kid, premature face acne, chicken pox make for a terrible sixth grade. And no such luck in seventh grade, I figured eighth grade was the year I'd shoot my shot. And after a nice little growth spurt. As a 12-year-old, I did what 12-year-olds do with their money. I saved cash and coins in a car. For some reason that morning, this morning, the fateful morning, I emptied my coin jar, fished out all the quarters and was like, 
dude, 20 bucks and quarters? Totally cool. Totally normal. Today's going to be a great day. Sweet. So he's going to school with 80 quarters in his inner pocket of his jacket. He's got a fresh haircut, Timberlands, new jeans, new bike jacket. Said to himself, hey, today's the day. I, I, I got it. Today is going to be my day. Never mind the weight of 80 coins in his inner jacket pockets. And as far as he was concerned, he was he was the man. The man. And was going to get the girl of his dreams. Just like any eighth grader would think. Right. right. So there she was standing in the cafeteria, Stephanie. As he was walking down the stairs, he saw her. She saw him. Locked eyes. He's like, oh, that's it. It's going to be perfect. He said, I'm holding my jacket. I could swing it around and put it on in one smooth motion. As I did this, clink, 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 $20 <laughs> and quarters, 80 freaking quarters fell on the floor and bounced and rolled for what felt like 20 minutes. I had her attention. I had the whole school's attention. Kids were coming up to me like, yo, pointing and laughing literally in my face. She made this face like she didn't want to laugh in my face. She's a sweet girl. One girl was baffled, like, are you going to do laundry or <laughs> later they, that day? I heard one girl say, I just don't know why he'd have so many quarters on him like that. So there's quarters all over the cafeteria floor. And someone says to me, you going to pick that up? And I was like, nah, it's cool. I don't really need it. And walked away. By the time, by that time, kids were already like, yo, free money. To this day, he says he'll be taking a shower and that memory will pop up in his head and he has to literally talk out loud to think about something else because it was so cringy. Oh my gosh. That is, that's funny. That is really funny um, because it's probably a linoleum floor. And so they're just like rolling and bouncing in the whole lunchroom. Even like that is funny. And I can imagine the whole idea of being slick and thrown on your jacket in one big like swoop right. like that. Um, so... One time, uh, this is not me, this is somebody else's story. One time back when I was in sixth grade, we had a science project where we would soak an egg in various liquids and uh, solutions to see what would happen, right? So we after we had a few assigned liquids, fair point. yeah, so we had a few assigned liquids, salt, water, water, vinegar. The teacher let our group choose one of the liquids of our choice. So I suggested my group that I had a bottle of rum at home and I could bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> It gets better. I was 100% serious and actually curious about what would happen. They thought I was joking. So they had jokingly said, yeah, sure. While I wasn't listening properly, they said something about bringing in seltzer water. So the next day, genius me walks into school with a bottle of rum. I was even proud of it. I showed it to my friends on the bus like I was hardcore or something like that. Oh boy. Science class comes and we all bring in our liquids and put them on the table. So each group, each group goes about doing their thing. And just as I was about to pour some of the rum into the beaker with the egg, the teacher says, yo, TF is that <laughs> me rum? My A is suspended for five days. I never got the rum back. I wonder if you got in trouble with parents. Oh, I would, I... Meaning I would like you that. took my rum. That's what I, yeah. I've, I've had some parents get upset when the kid took uh, their stuff. Here's a good one. One afternoon, I was hanging out at my grandparents. And my grandma was showing me love letters her and my grandpa had exchanged. In one was a lock of hair. I don't know why, but that struck me, struck young me as the epitome of romance. I'd been crushing hard on in class on a guy in my class. So I decided to write a letter pouring my heart out and included a lock in my hair. Small problem. I didn't have any hairs long enough except for my bangs. Putting it all on the line for my love, I cut a chunk of hair out of my bangs. When I gave him the letter, he opened it and said, ew, there's hair in here. <laughs> that was pretty much the only response I got. So that pretty much crushed her. Then some of the other girls noticed that I'd cut my hair from my bangs and I got to live with that for four months while it grew back in. Girl's hair takes a while to grow back, right? Especially if it's long, bangs. right? I know. And no. but bangs, I mean, it's right there. Right. And everybody can see it. Um, which is funny is we're talking about some of this stuff that's embarrassing now. Like, like as if it was embarrassing, but some kids are doing it now as like TikTok challenges. Yeah. Have you seen the ones where kids are trying to fart in class, like, and get it recorded, but like not have the teacher notice and stuff like that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's both pick one to finish off on. Okay. And, and um, let me see. I got a good one. Okay, go ahead. It has to do with bangs again. Okay. When I was in seventh grade, our school rules were that your hair bangs could be past your eyebrows. 
One day they told me I had to have my hair cut by the next year, they would take disciplinary action. So that's when I got the nice, so not so bright idea. I decided to shave my eyebrows because I figured if I didn't have them, then the rules wouldn't apply. To my surprise, they didn't see it my way. They punished me and I still had to cut my hair. They did change the rules to hairs being above the eyes instead of the eyebrows. So I was proud of that. But still, 15 years later, my friends and family make fun of me for that one. No eyebrows. Oh, man. Eyebrows don't go back fast either. So it wasn't embarrassing, but I, in third grade at a junior jazz game, they gave us, this is not connected with that, but just to remind, in third grade, they gave us uh, junior jazz shaving kits was the junior jazz game thing. Went into the bathroom at halftime, shaved off my eyebrows because my team dared me to do it. Went to school the next day. Everybody noticed. When I got home the night before, my mom had no idea. So the next day when I got home from school, my mom was freaking out. And they do grow back. I've shaved them actually a couple times. Of them. Well, one of them was for a school fundraiser. So that was that's why we shaved them off. Anyway, no. For, both? for real. For real. Yeah, both. Both. I shaved my head, but I'm not sure I do eyebrows. Yeah. Uh, it, well, what we did was if they got a certain number of, oh, uh, I get it. I get it. Ones, they cut my hair all they want. Anyway, Still. I have pictures. I'll have to, I'll have to post them sometime. Yeah. Okay. This one actually, this one actually, this one kind of makes me sad. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't want to read that one. I want to end on <laughs> for funny. I just, like, it does make me sad. Okay. Here's a good one. So ninth grade, um, I was asked to go to the board and fix a grammatical error mistake in a sentence. The classmate that semi bullied me threw a marker at me. And as I was walking to the front of the classroom. I decided that I had had enough and I was going to end the harassment once and for all. I picked up the marker from the floor. So this has got to be since they've had whiteboards. So in the past, what, 15 years? Um, yeah. yeah, years, yeah I was in, yeah, more than that. Anyway, I picked up the marker from the floor, reared back and threw the marker with all my might at the bully. Oh, boy. The marker, however, hit a girl seated in the front of him and split open the bridge of her nose. She immediately began crying and bleeding all over her desk. Oh my she God. had to go to the hospital and get it glued back together. I was mortified and scared of the ramifications to come. Luckily, nothing ever came of it. Jeez. Crazy. Yeah. That's more like lucky, I think, because I could see a suspension or something like that coming out of that. Yeah, I'm um, sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. Were you in the time of lockers? Hmm? Were you in middle school when they when they basically would make you shower in the locker rooms? Yeah. Looking back now, is that just the most crazy idea ever? He, yeah. Luckily, previous to my time, they used to have jock strap check. You had to show the PE teacher you were wearing a jock strap for PE. That's before my time too. Yeah. Um, they did shower checks, and I remember kids would do a bunch of crazy things. They would bring in like glasses of water and keep them in their locker just to dump over them. Yeah, it was like, um, it was it was a weird time. It was a weird time. Nineties were yeah, being in nineties in the middle school was a weird time. There was a lot of stuff that crazy was, time. Yeah. So uh, there you have it. We'd most love to hear your moment. most embarrassing story. Uh, comment below. Send them in. Um, again, if you enjoy the school story podcast as much as we do, you can give it a five star review on all of the listening places that you listen. You can also send us an email or text through social media and let us know that you'd love to be a guest. Do it. Um, uh, we'd love to have guests on. And so, uh, I'm signing off for the school story podcast. I'm Spencer. I'm Stuart. Have a fantastic week.